Good morning guys, welcome back to Choco, back to another video. So in today's video, we are chilling in this beautiful day in California where it's raining. Now honestly, it's been raining the last four days and today was pretty much calculated with the weather people that they're being paid to, you know, give us accurate weather. To say yesterday there's gonna be no rain, all of a sudden I wake up this morning to the sound of rain. So I love rain, I love the fact that we have rain because hopefully our water bill goes down a little bit, but um, um, but unfortunately, you guys know our e91 build is sitting outside and i can't really work with this rain i have the engine covered up so everything's gravy in the navy there i could move this umbrella and start working on the e91 but then the engine isn't protected and i don't want any water getting into the cylinders um so yeah we're just in a little bit of a situation and that's the reason why i just i just can't film and i know a lot of you guys are gonna be like nori it's time for you to get a shop you're a big boy now and i'm like yes we're finally, finally established in this home. Um, I'm very grateful to be able to afford this home and bought this home. Uh, but the next thing is for us, after getting the Audi R8 for the goal of 2022, maybe the goal of 2023 is getting our own shop. We'll see, we'll see you guys. I definitely wanna get a big shop if I'm gonna get a shop because honestly, um, the idea of getting a smaller shop for $800 a month, I'm not gonna lie, it's just not cutting it. If I spend 800 to like $1,100 a month, I'll be able to fit one, maybe two cars in a garage. And it, honestly, it's not really going to be like that great. It's going to be pretty pathetic. And uh, if I go ahead and raise that budget to $2,000 or $3,000, honestly, I'm leaning more towards $3,000. But we need to find a way to make that kind of money. But if we can get $3,000 a month invested into a shop, we can get a pretty amazing big shop. And that would be pretty sick. Maybe I'll call some of the boys up and see if they want to all get into a shop together. I think that'd be kind of cool. Just a YouTube oriented shop. I did that idea before and it severely backfired. And that's the reason why I don't have a shop anymore. But I did it with the wrong people. So long story short, if as long as I do it with the right people, hopefully everything be gravy in the Navy. But um, in the meantime, guys, we are pretty much just waiting uh, for the rain to 100% die out. You guys can see that I literally, uh, no, I was just sprinkling. It was just raining, now it's sprinkling. I'm literally just waiting for this rain to kind of die out and then we can go to the backyard and get some stuff done. Maybe honestly, today's not gonna be a good day either. Um, I'm just showing you guys my new Milwaukee tool because I just picked this up and I'm very excited about it. But on another note, <laughs> I think today, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the E90 into the garage and start working on some other panels, wrapping it gray. I mean, there's nothing really I could do today probably tomorrow we'll start working on the e91 and today i guess it's just meant for the daily and just an fyi guys it actually says it's not going to be raining right now um and all of this week uh but i honestly doubt it the fact that it says it's not raining right now and it's raining <laughs> like what the heck and yes let's go ahead and get the e90 in the garage So yeah guys, I ended up wrapping this car partially in Nardo Gray already. Reason being, um, honestly, I really wanted to get the original color to be paint match uh, because this is a very rare and beautiful color. But as you guys can see right over here, um, this is what the water is doing to the paint. This car looks like it's been resprayed at one point and it's bubbling up underneath the clear coat. And eventually, um, as you guys can see, this is actually probably more even phased. If I go ahead and move my fingers, you guys can see how the water just gets behind the clear coat and then eventually starts cracking up like this and it just keeps cracking, keeps cracking, keeps cracking, and there's nothing I can do about it. Like right here, all the clear coat's pretty much off the trunk. The, we have a huge clear coat issue starting on the rear bumper. I didn't actually have a clear coat issue until the rain kind of came up. Now I have a rear bumper problem. This quarter panel has some severe clear coat issues. So you have two quarter panels with severe clear coat issues, a trunk, a rear bumper, um, this mirror crap board over here. The hood was so ugly to the point to where I didn't want to park this car anywhere. It just got really, really, really ugly and started peeling everywhere. And we had like patches of peels everywhere. While I'm driving, I literally see clear coat flying off. So I was like, you know what? I think it's time to at least stand down the hood and wrap that. And actually we ended up wrapping this thing and it came out pretty dang good. So I'm pretty happy with the hood. I did this on my own. So we did get a little bit of dust particles and stuff underneath because we didn't have a perfectly clean surface we were laying it down. But yeah, I think in the meantime, while I'm here alone in the rain, I can either go inside um, and pretend to be busy or I can actually be busy on this car and potentially use it as another asset towards the RA or it's gonna be a good daily regardless. So long story short, let's go ahead and wrap some more panels. I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on the two rear doors um, so we can use the quarter panel pieces to wrap the front doors. So without further ado, let's go ahead, dry up these doors, clean them up, detail them, then wrap them. Okay. 
guys, after cleaning this panel, this is one of the good panels. I was like, man, I don't want to wrap this. But then as soon as I put the wrap on it and peeled it up a little bit, that's what happens. That's what happens when you guys get a cheap paint job. And uh, whoever that painted this entire car just did the worst. I even, I barely had wrap on this door and it peeled off on this door as well. So now these two panels are now bad panels. And I'm pretty sure, honestly, at this point, guys, every single panel on this car is bad. Um, I'm actually probably not gonna wrap this when it's wet because honestly, when it was wet, it had to keep pulling it up, and putting it back down, more heat. And uh, honestly, all those panels are good now and the wrap kind of sealed it from the, the, the clear coat peeling. But I bet you if I unwrap those two fenders, it will be game over. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is honestly, I'm gonna have to sand down this entire door, but the other three doors, I might just pretty much let it dry off, fully dry off, and then I'll come back to it later and try to wrap over all this clear coat to make sure that I don't actually have to sand all four doors because that would absolutely suck. And guys, just like that, we got the hood, the fenders, and now the door finished. This is a complete door. We even did the door handles. Keyless entry still works. I think so. <laughs> it's because it's already unlocked. I put my fingers on here. Bada bing, bada bang. Unlock just like that. So keyless entry still works. I think I did a really, really, really good job with the door handle. I normally don't do my door handles this good, but I actually, it actually came out freaking fantastic. Now the door honestly came out pretty awesome. The only issue I started having is right over here after I wrapped it all and heated it, uh, it looks like some of the clear coat ended up peeling back up. And uh, honestly guys, I'm so over it. This car, uh, the paint is just horrendous. Um, it's just something to live with. I'm gonna go ahead and sand down this door another day and knock that out. But in the meantime, the sun did come out. So let's go ahead and go work on the E91 because that is a project you guys all want to see. This is a project you guys are just going to see me work on here and there just because it's the daily but whenever we actually have sunlight we're going to go back to the backyard and work on that E91 because that car is our pride and joy. You guys saw the weather supposedly it's not supposed to be raining in the next couple of days so I'm going to go ahead and take off all this stuff so we can start assembling the engine bay. So now that we have the cover off guys, it's finally time to start assembling this engine bay. I think our work with the transmission tunnel replacement ended up working out really, really, really good. So at this point guys, we are ready to start putting in all the weather guards and stuff like that and just and just getting everything else on here so we can finally service the engine and slap the engine here. Now I don't actually know if I'm going to be doing the engine first. I might actually do this front suspension, the rear suspension first and then actually get the car a little bit lower before dropping the engine there. I do think that's going to be a little bit easier, which means that we are a long way away from from that but at the same time you never know guys the thing with a build like this is that you actually there's no instruction manual you just kind of go with the flow and whatever ends up working is working you know so we're gonna go ahead and take the steps that we think is gonna be the easiest and uh, if something else comes up that's easier then we're gonna go ahead and take that now without further ado let's go ahead and start assembling this engine bay again I've said that so many times I'm just so excited it's been something I've been trying to do for so 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 long So this bracket for the O2 sensor went on perfectly. This side, on the other hand, unfortunately, uh, has no screw holes. So uh, if you guys look at that, there's literally nothing that mounts it from the top or the bottom. So my goal is, instead of putting two screws to basically make it to the point to where um, once you screw it on, if you ever unscrew, it's gonna strip that hole. I'm actually gonna use these guys right over here. Um, so you can just pretty much push in the tab and open it up if you ever wanna remove this piece. I kinda wanna get an OEM finish and I wanna have every single bracket from the M3 onto this car. That being said, Let's go ahead and drill out two holes big enough to hold these two guys and install our bracket and guys after making two tabs one on the top one on the bottom right down there. This thing is perfectly mounted. If I go ahead and move it back and forth, it's not going anywhere. So now that we have the O2 sensor bracket on this side and this side, we are officially done with this whole transmission tunnel area. We even have the drainage hooked up and uh, everything mounts over here perfectly, like literally perfectly with our brand new transmission tunnel bracket with that we <laughs> that we ended up welding up. I am so, so, so happy. And do not worry guys, when I actually drill those two holes, I actually used a primer as well, just to make sure that those holes do not rust up or anything like that. So um, I'm on top of it, do not worry. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and put some more shielding on and transfer some more things from the E90 M3. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to make any more brackets. Hopefully the rest of things are transferable. For the most part, everything should be transferable, but some things like that bracket, like the transmission tunnel, we do have to do some modifications, but uh, I'll show you guys every single modification just in case you guys wanna do something like this down the road. So 
So what we just removed, guys, is actually the brake lines to that car. I didn't actually realize that that actually needs to be replaced as well. So literally everything on this car has been officially removed. The only thing I didn't actually remove was the brake lines and then the e-brakes. <laughs> it looks like the only thing you can pretty much reuse is the e-brake when you do an E91 M3 conversion. It really comes to show you guys, when you guys get an M3, how much M3 exclusive parts you guys get with the car, it really shows that the extra money you're putting into the car, you're getting a completely different car. Same shell, but different car. So finally now, after removing the brake line, I can actually feed this and put it right over here. Just like that, guys. That looks pretty much perfect. Before we actually get this heat shield on, we actually have to put our brake master cylinder right in here. So that should be a perfect fitment. So we, once I actually get that grommet sitting in place perfectly, I can actually put that heat shielding on and bada bing, bada bang, that section is completely done. <laughs> And just like that, guys, we ended up adding a few more things, a few more heat shields. We got a plate right there. Um, this mounted perfectly, this mounted perfectly. Um, now we're actually kind of having an issue with this little bracket right over here that holds actually four different lines. So I don't want to like skip out on this. I really want that bracket to be there. Um, that being said, there is no hole there. I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole and actually get it to where it'll look OEM from the front. And I'm just going to have a screw that holds it in from the back. Should be 100% solid. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed.
we are officially at the end of the video and I'm here sitting with the 2022 goal, which is hopefully, 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 hopefully guys, imagine getting a Gen 2 RA on this channel. You never know, you never know. The thing is with how Copart's really rolling, um, there's only like a couple R8s popping up, not really many, which means the less that pop up, the more competitive it's gonna be, um, and that is becoming unfortunate. But you never know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And actually I'm working on a build behind the scenes that I'm actually doing as a flip I've been working on this week. Um, it's neither one of the cars you guys have ever seen on this channel. It's just something I'm kind of working on a side project at Erlan's place, and I'm trying to again work on the R8 dream. Doing YouTube is lovely. It's fun. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I love doing custom builds and stuff like that on it, but it doesn't bring a lot of money. So I do have to sometimes reach out and do other things and dedicate a lot of my time to it off camera um, to be able to achieve such a big dream, which I'll let you guys know everything that I've actually done to achieve this. But ultimately it has been the cars on this channel, but I realized to make this a reality by the end of this year, I do have to pick up the pace and I do have to work on some things off camera. Now after this particular one, that I'm going to end up finishing at Erlon's place. If you guys do want me to pick up another build and show you guys as a side project on top of the E91, let me know down below. As of right now, hopefully as soon as you finish that side project, you'll be able to sell. I'll show you guys what that is exactly. I'll possibly show it to you guys when I actually have it up for sale. And then the Supra as well, um, that is technically sold. So uh, that is a crazy thing as well. The market's kind of crazy right now. And when I say crazy, I mean like in a bad way because cars aren't really selling right now. We're kind of like in a low key, like, weird place so cheaper cars sell all day every day but more expensive cars not so much because of the whole loan issues and things like that so long story short guys we are making progress towards the RA dream and I'll fill you guys more into that down the road but as of right now guys speaking of progress the progress on the E91 build has been absolutely amazing I'm super happy that we finally have most of the engine bay stuff put together we have a few more things that have to transfer in the engine bay and then the engine bay is done we can actually start putting the subframe the front suspension lower it on the front uh, and then we're probably actually gonna work on the whole undercarriage of the car, try to get everything assembled on the undercarriage of the car um, so it's ready to rock and roll. Literally rock and roll. <laughs> so once we actually get us a rolling chassis, then we'll be able to actually start transferring on a lot more of the things from wiring, do coding, do stuff like that. I'm super excited to get this build on the road. I've contacted a few other companies that have actually built E91 M3s because I'm not the only one that's building an E91 M3, but I think I'm building a you know special edition. So it is gonna be technically a one of one. I've never actually seen one in this color like ever. Not a picture, not a video, not nothing. So the one we are doing is a one of one, uh, but there is, a, a, I believe, at least another handful of E91 M3s out there. By now, two of the owners, and one of them told me it took the shop a year to complete, and the other one told me it took the shop nearly almost like two years because it was kind of like off and on thing. It's been like a budget issue, and uh, almost two years to complete that second car. So if we can actually accomplish this in half a year fully, it'll be pretty insane. So anyways, if you guys are enjoying the E91 build series, make sure to smash the like button. If you guys want me to show you guys more of my side projects, even my daily projects on this channel as well, maybe integrated into the E91 build or maybe even separate videos, let me know down below. But without further ado, guys, that is going to have to conclude the video. I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.